the saga of the possessed PC is almost over. And that calls for a update video as well as a drink while we switch out our RM8 CPU and I'll let you guys know just exactly what's been going on since the last time I checked in. So for those of you that have already been following along, you are well up to date with the Asus AMD saga that we've been fighting on our build. And if not, you can catch up right here, but I'll sum it up for you guys in one sentence. AMD good guy, Asus bad guy. While Asus is still fighting me on the RMA process, and I will continue to fight it until I get my board replaced, AMD almost immediately approved the RMA and we've already received our new CPU. So I wanna go ahead and get that bad boy installed. And I also figured while we have the PC busted open, we might as well upgrade the RAM too. So I have a new DDR5 6000 kit from G-Skill and ready to install. Now, if you look closely, you'll notice there's already one in there. Well, that's because we went with G-Skill uh, DDR5 6000 CL36 in our original build. We're gonna be upgrading that to the CL30. Now there's more than just the cast latency that's the difference between these two chips. The 30 actually is SK Helix die versus the Samsung die that's on the CL36, meaning with a little bit of work, I should be able to get these secondary timings tighter and that'll take some playing with, but as we do that, I promise I'll post a video and let you guys know the results. Now, I haven't quit fighting ASUS to get the board replaced. And while we're gonna continue to roll with our backup board in this build, if it does get replaced, I think we'll maybe throw it into something and do a subscriber giveaway, which is the perfect time to let you guys know that if you haven't subscribed already, if you enjoy our content, click down below, subscribe to the channel. Now, I never do a call to action in any of my videos, but we are very close to a thousand subscribers and I plan to do a major giveaway. So now's the time. If you haven't subbed, check below, click the link and get subbed to the channel. One last thing before we get this thing busted open, you might've noticed I am wearing this super comfy FPP Tech t-shirt available now from Spreadshop, as well as a ton of other merchandise. Anything that you get, all proceeds go directly to the channel and let us keep making amazing builds and doing awesome subscriber giveaways for you guys. Also down in the description, you'll find links for our Patreon, which we'll be uploading videos to this week for behind the scenes and blooper reel stuff, as well as our newly launched Discord channel. So make sure you guys go to the description, take a second to check everything out and let us know your thoughts if there's anything else you wanna see. All right guys, we're all busted open. So the first thing we're gonna do is get our RAM swapped out. Sorry about the overhead camera being in the way. I wanted you guys to have a good look at exactly what we're doing inside the machine. So let's go ahead and get right to it. We're gonna pop our current RAM sticks out of here. We'll be swapping them out with this new kit from G-Skill. Again, it's DDR5 6000 CL30, but the big difference between this and the old kit is it's actually SK Helix die. Um, again, it should allow for tighter timings. It typically does a little bit better on secondary timings than Samsung die for DDR5. So get this busted open for our motherboard and pretty much all motherboards now. Um, if you have four dim slots, two and four is gonna be what you wanna go with. Um, we verified that on ours many months ago whenever we originally did this build. And since the backup board that we're using is the exact same board, nothing's changed there. Uh, remember DDR5 is key to only go one way. So double check that before you just start jamming things in there and ruining your PC. We'll get this in, make sure I got it lined up right. And I did, first try, hell yeah. Tell you, this was a lot easier to do. On the initial install, when I didn't have anything else in here. Where'd I put the other one? There it is. 
Um, it's a little bit tighter now. Probably could have removed the AIO first, but we didn't, and now we're dealing with that. Come on, find the glue. I don't think this kit seated properly in slot two, so I'm gonna take it out and put it back in one more time just to be safe. We got it there, we got it there. All right, let's go ahead and get our AIO taken off and get all the old thermal paste cleaned off of it. By the way, guys, this uh, AIO that I went with was a deep cool LS720 and it has been absolutely phenomenal. Price to performance wise, I really don't think you can beat it right now. Um, that's a good magnet. I'll drop some affiliate links down in the description for a lot of the parts that we use in this build. They're available in other videos, but I still think uh, some of what we went with was just really, really good value, good price to performance. But for sure, number one is this AIO. It has been absolutely amazing and comes in at under 130 bucks US, which just can't be beat. Another quick tip I'll give you if you're ever changing out CPUs, something that we do um, off camera is right before we busted this thing apart, I did have it running and got the CPU heated up a little bit. That lets the thermal paste get a little less sticky. If you ever had that issue where you go to remove your cooler or something and it just rips the CPU out of the socket, that'll help you a lot. Also just giving it a little twist as you lift off and boom. I'm gonna try not to screw up my cable management too bad while I have it off. Let's prop that somewhere safe. So we got the old one out. This was a backup CPU that we were using that we had tested a couple of months ago. We've already sent our fried one back to AMD. Uh, and this one, I'll be very careful cleaning off some of that thermal paste with some isopropyl wipes and stick this somewhere safe. We'll use this in a future build, maybe throw it in a test rig. It's still a solid CPU, it's just not the one I originally had. And get all that old thermal paste off of our cooler. These little isopropyl alcohol wipes are amazing. Uh, they make cleaning this up so much easier. Non-conductive. And we have a little anti-static cloth that will just clean off any residual. And I don't know if you guys can see it in the video because I can't see the overhead camera, but it is beautiful and clean, just like the day we bought it. And now it's time for the most fun part. Let's drop our brand new 7950X, courtesy of AMD's RMA process, into this rig. Golden triangle goes in the top left corner of your socket. Boom, we are seated. Close that bad boy up, and now it's time to apply some fresh thermal paste get the cooler bolted and we're all done. This was probably a three minute upgrade. Another major debate in the PC building community is always how do you apply your thermal paste? Um, I did a video a while back, you can see here, where we tested some different methods and as far as coverage, the spread method seems to be the best so I like to get a little X on here. Try not to overdo it. So my favorite spreader, you can get the spatulas that come with it. You can waste money. 
I like to use one of my guitar picks. It is the perfect size, the perfect flexibility to allow you to spread it out just thick enough to cover the whole CPU. You don't want any of the writing visible. Just make sure you're careful. You don't glob on the paste where it drips over the edges. And honestly, it's a non-factor. It's, unless you're using liquid metal, it's non-conductive. So it's not gonna hurt anything if a little bit leaks over the sides, but it is a pain in the ass to clean if you ever wanna do it. So make sure you use the right amount from the get-go and we'll get our cooler back reinstalled. reinstalled. We're not tightening down yet. We're just gonna put the screws on in X pattern. We'll make sure our cooler is square because I don't want to have to take this bastard apart again. And I am incredibly OCD. So if it is not exactly square, I, it'll drive me crazy. I'm that guy that will absolutely take this thing apart, clean it and reapply thermal and everything just to get it that millimeter extra square. All right, once all four are in, Let's tighten it down in a cross pattern. Once you feel it bottom out, do not over tighten. There is no need. It's making good contact. Boom. That is it. We got our new RAM installed. We got our new CPU from AMD installed and we got our Backup board from ASUS because ASUS refuses to RMA my original installed. Again though, if they ever agree to RMA it, I will use the extra one for a subscriber giveaway. I actually have some pretty cool build ideas that I wanna do, but I don't wanna share too much until we actually hit that thousand subscriber goal. So again, if you haven't take the time, like the video, subscribe to the channel, I'm gonna get this bad boy put all back together, get it all hooked up, run some benchmarks, and I'll make sure everything is posted down in the description. So get the tempered glass panel back installed, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was really different than our normal content. We didn't really show you anything new or review anything. Just wanted to kind of take you guys through my uh, struggle with getting everything repaired. And with that, I hear the lawn guy cranking up his lawnmower, trying to get everything straight outside. So that is my cue to wrap this video up and end it. Make sure you check the comments and the description for all those links I talked about earlier, as well as benchmarks. And let's see if this new CPU from AMD matches or beats the performance of our original. As always, thanks for watching guys. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video, don't forget to check out one of these. Make sure you like, subscribe, check out some of our other content. And as always, thanks for watching.